there is none like you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord, there is none like you. We thank you for all that you did for us this week and all that you continue to do. We exalt your matchless name. There is nobody like you. And so, Father, we run to you because in you we find everything that we need. We run to you, Lord, because you are our comforter. We run to you because you are our joy. You are our song. Hallelujah. We run to you. You are our everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. oh. Just join me as we minister this song, I Run to You. This song that I wrote years ago it has always been my desire to run to God. Yeah. Always my desire to find my place in Him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I run to you. I run to you. I run to you. Joy of my desire, oh, consuming I run to you. I run to you. I run to you. I run to you. Joy of my desire. Oh, consuming I run to you. There's nothing in this world that could ever matter more than finding my place in you. Oh, I I will you. my desire for consuming Hallelujah. I run to you. I will. To you, 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 there's nothing in this world that could ever matter more than finding my place in you. Oh, Lord, I will to you. I will to you. I will. Joy of my You are the joy of my soul. To you, 
There's nothing in this world to lie to ever matter more than I take my place in Oh, Lord, I will run to you. I will run to you. I will to you. Oh, 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 we worship you, Lord. Oh, we keep you, holy Lord. Oh, the joy of my desire. Lord, you are my love. I fire. Oh Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord. Oh, you mean the world to me. Lord, you are my everything, my Lord and all. You're my soul, boy, Jesus. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord. I just love you, Lord. I just love you, Lord. I love the way that you love me back. I love you, Lord. Oh God, I run to you. I run to you. I run to you. When I need direction, I run to you. When I'm failing, Lord, I run to you. When I'm up, I run to you. When I'm down, I run to you. Oh, oh. When I'm happy, I run to you. When I'm sad, I run to you. There's nothing in this world could ever matter more than finding my place in you. Oh, I run to you. I run to you. I run to you. I run to you, cause your word reminds us that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. The Lord, I say, the Lord, that Lord, you are my refuge and you are my fortress. You are my joy and my soul. Oh, if you are living, you are more you, Lord, I have my being. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Father, abide with us. Father, abide with us because we don't want to leave this place. If you don't go with us, Lord, then we can't go. Abide with us, Lord. Anoint, so oh God, the speaker. Anoint the ears of the hearers, oh God. Father, cause us to see you. Cause us to be changed. Oh God, cause us to just know you in another level, in another realm tonight. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost and fire. Have your way tonight, Lord, like only you can. Do for us what we can't do for ourselves tonight, oh God. Only you can do it for us, Lord. Father, have your way. 
Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. It's Bible Studies Friday, and yes, we are ready to just hear what the Lord will have us work on tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Um, continue to invite others because we're going to have a quick time in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. So, you know, it has been a reality that many Christians, many believers will not pursue formal education as it relates to, you know, Christian doctrines, you know, and including understanding and studying the Bible. Consequently, there be a huge amount of Christians who their, their knowledge will be significantly impacted in a probably a negative way because we do not know the nitty gritty. We do not know the stuff. When we, if we're going to be a dentist, then we study, you know, in that area. If we want to do math, we study in that area. We want to be accountants, we study in that area. But for some reason, when we become Christians, that's it. We are not putting out the effort to study, um, to know. So every Christian really should have an exposure to the 10 major doctrines of the Bible, and which are the cornerstones, of course, to what we believe and how we're going to live and what we're going to do as people in the kingdom. I want us to understand that I did mention doctrine, that I'm not talking about individual church doctrines. I'm talking about the teachings, the fundamental teachings of the Bible as it relates to Christianity. And so it is very important that we understand those and hence the need for Bible study. We can't have more or too much Bible study. You know, I mean, in our lifetime, we'll not know it all. So the more, the better. So the doctrines to which I refer earlier, we're talking about the doctrine of the Bible. I mean, that's a book, as we mentioned last week. We're talking about God the Father. What do we know? What do we know about the Lord Jesus Christ? What do we know about the Holy Spirit, the depravity of humanity? Yes, you know, these, these things that we're talking about. We're talking about salvation, the return of Christ, the resurrection, the body of Christ, and the family of God. And like I said, these are the major ones. So there are other doctrines. These are the major ones. And we're saying... You know, how much do we know? What do we really know as Christians? It is important that we know. We need to know, you know, so that we can be impactful. It is God's desire for his people to deepen their understanding in their Christian calling. It is his desire. And so I want to welcome, hey, Lashante. Hey, um, Gabby and Tash. Welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's session. Welcome to those who are watching via God My Rock and um, Chino and everybody there. Welcome, welcome, uh, just welcome. And I want to thank you for accepting the invitation. Thank you for making this time a priority. Last week, we started our journey in the doctrine of the Bible, and we call that biblio bibliology, right? So we call that bibliology. We didn't mention that word last week, but that literally what we're doing because we, un we were thinking like, man, how can we be Christians? How can we be studying the Bible? And we don't really know much about the Bible. So we have started from the very beginning. If you missed last week, not a problem. The session was recorded and it's available on my YouTube channel. And that is, what's that again? Auntie Nats. So you can just go to Auntie Nats and you will find our Bible Study Fridays Part 1. So you can catch up. So we can recall, however, from last week that the Bible has dual authorship, just as Christ has dual nature. We remembered that we looked at Christ, that he's fully man and fully God. And the Bible is fully God and also fully human, yet without error. What an amazing um, place to be. What an amazing understanding for us to have. Then we also looked at the fact that the Bible is the infallible and inspired word of God. The Bible carries the authority of God. So tonight we're taking it a step further. Like we're still there, but just moving out or still there and just expounding on stuff. Because for me, what the Lord has laid on my heart is that 
we open up the little areas so that there can be full understanding so that our faith and our stance in God can be deepened as we get into darker days that are looming ahead. So for our topic tonight, if we were to do a topic, it is what is inspiration. So I did say earlier that the Bible is the infallible and inspired word of God. What is inspiration? Yes, I have. What is in inspiration? So that is where we're looking at. So we are stating that the Bible is inspired. That's what I said. The Bible is inspired. What do we mean? When you say that, what do you mean? Huh? What do you really mean? What comes to mind? What are you talking about? Or is just something we just say because we hear it said so many times. The Bible is inspired. What do we mean? Right? Um, what were the thoughts of the theologians then? If we might have our own thoughts or we may not have, and that's okay. That's why we're studying. But what were the thoughts of the theologians? You know, what, what is it? And then when we look at what the theologians, the many theologians would have written and would have said, we realize that some of them, they had varied, varied and discourse regarding what it meant that the Bible is inspired. So tonight we want to open up this topic. What is inspiration? Write it down, jot it down, because that's a question we want to answer. If we have not answered that at the end, please make it known. I'm on to that you didn't answer the question. All right. So some of the theologians, so we're going to take it from there. They focused on the fact that maybe the, the, it was the writer. The writers were, the, you know, were inspired. That inspiration must have been talking about the writers. Others said, ah, oh, I think it, it could have been the writings. And others said, oh, maybe it's the readers. Have you ever had any of those thoughts? So the truth is many may not have given thought. Many of us may not have given that um, thought to this matter of inspiration before. And so in this segment, in this session, where are you at? What do you think? Whilst you don't have to say it out loud, but I want you to have a conversation with yourself. What do you think? You know, so with all of what I said first, some believe in it was the writings. Some thought it was um, the writers. Some thought the inspiration was um, meant to be the readers. There were still some other thoughts, right? Some thought that, you know, inspiration could have been in relation to the general message of the Bible. Others figured it could be the thoughts surrounding it. Others figured, oh, it has got to be the words. And it continued and it continued. So it was like, you know, just going on a wild goose chase maybe. So with all that has been stated, we see the need for precision in stating the biblical doctrines, right? There has to be precision. And so in time past, all that was needed to affirm one's belief in full inspiration of the Bible was a statement. And the statement went like this. I believe in the inspiration of the Bible, right? So as human tried to get their way around and to, you know, get an understanding, they said, okay, if it is that you really believe what the Bible said it is, then you need to declare your thoughts and you're going to declare it. Everybody would need to declare it by saying, I believe in the inspiration of the Bible. And that would have been okay. However, challenges arose from that. Who, and, and there were those who did not extend inspiration, as we said before, to the words of the text. So if they did not believe that it was a text that would have been inspired, then they would have had a problem with declaring that I believe in the inspiration of the Bible. So the statement was now upgraded to ensure that those who are having this opposition don't have an upper hand. Then it was upgraded to, I believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible, right? It's getting sweeter, isn't it? Then do you think this fit everybody? Do you think everyone agreed with that as, okay, we could work with that? Uh-uh. There were still those who purported that 
Not all parts of the Bible were inspired. So we had that no problem again. So we're moving from I believe in the inspiration of the Bible to I believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible. And now we're going to another upgrade. This sounds like Apple phone, right? You just keep upgrading, upgrading. I believe in the verbal plenary inspiration of the Bible. So it's getting sweeter. What plenary means really? What does it mean? Right? It means that each word, not just the overarching ideas or concepts, but each word was meaningfully chosen under the superintendence of God. So they're saying to those who said it's on only some parts were inspired. Say, no, 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 no. All parts. So now we have a definition to work with. I believe in the verbal plenary inspiration of the Bible. Do you think it would stop there? Well, there were still those who did not ascribe total accuracy to the Bible. And even in our days, we know that we have those, right? And not to give them room, um, not to give them any room for their continuous um, clamoring, another upgrade was necessary. Can you imagine that? So it was now upgraded to, I believe in the verbal, plenary, infallible, inerrant inspiration of the Bible. Wow. Can you remember what that was? I believe in the verbal, plenary, infallible, inerrant inspiration of the Bible. Inerrant literally means here without error. And infallible, we looked at that one last week, means incapable of error. So now it sounds like the definition is a lot, don't you? Sounds like it has covered all the persons with, with um, situations, you know, with issues, taking issues with the word. But you know what? Infallible. But I must tell you that this didn't stop them. We're still having those issues today. So clearly it never stopped. You know, when we want to create situations, situations are going to continue. So infallible and inerrant began to limit the matters of faith only to matters of faith only then. Also embracing that all the Bible records, you know, so if it's like just a matter of faith, what about embracing all the Bible records, including historical facts, um, genealogies, account of the creation, and so on? It became necessary to now add another concept to it. So it was now what? I believe in the verbal, plenary, infallible, inerrant, unlimited inerrancy, inspiration of the Bible. <laughs> so let's go back. To the original statement. Let's go back to the original statement. It says, I believe in the inspiration of the Bible. Each addition to this basic statement arose out of what? Erroneous teaching. Do you recognize that? So each we had to, there, there was need for continuous addition. To prove the worth of the scripture, right? So because some people started teaching something wrong, then the definition lengthened. They started teaching something else wrong and it lent, and it was stretching out, going, going, going. Well, my Lord, I don't think there would be a book today that could hold just the definition for inspiration of the Bible. And so I recognize that errors in teaching would have caused all sorts of stuff. People are still impacted by these teaching today even in the subconscious, even maybe some of us are influenced and impacted by some of these teachings. And let's check because this is Bible study and we really want to encounter God and we really want old ways, you know, to fall off us and we want to be brand new because we want to really experience God in his fullness. So I want to I have a question for you. How many times have you skipped over the genealogies when you're reading the Bible. <laughs> Enough time. Be honest with yourself, man. Holy How many times in a reading is Matthew 2 and you skip over the genealogies because what? In our minds, it's not important. Do you realize that we're thinking that that seeped down into our system from one of those errors where we think that, oh, those could not be inspired. So in other words, what we're saying all the Bible is not inspired. If we do that, how many of us 
have never read some books in the Bible. Why? Why haven't you? Pause and think. Why haven't we? You know? So we're seeing that, okay, something could really be happening on my inside based on things that would have happened long ago. And because I really had not stopped to give thought to some things. But you know what? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. We are trying to answer the question, what is inspiration? The Bible is the inspired word of God. What is inspiration? The doctrine of inspiration is not something that theologians have forced on the Bible. We need to come to terms with that. So they were there trying to find a meaning and we saw the confusion. We saw the challenges that they encountered. We just want to pause here and now and announce that the doctrine of inspiration is not something that the theologians um, enforced on the Bible. It is actually a teaching of the Bible itself. Inspiration is a teaching of the Bible itself. Right? It is a conclusion derived from the information contained in the Bible. So whatever we, mankind, may want to conjure or think about the Bible, it, it has, the Bible has it as its right. The Bible has a right to testify on its own behalf. Just like any one of us being a witness, we can testify on our own behalf. The Bible testifies for itself, isn't it? The Bible testifies for itself. So here is the relevant data that the Bible presents and confronts us with regarding the inspiration of the Bible, right? And we can look at 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. And many of us might have heard it before. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That was the King James Version. And it's Bible study, so I encourage persons all the time to read from other versions as well to just open up our understanding. So let's read the King James Version again. All scripture is inspired of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And then one of my favorite go-to would be the message version. And it says, there's nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God breathed and useful one way or another. I know you want to hear the message version again. It says, there is nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God breathed and useful one way or another. That's just awesome. And then there's another go-to that I love, the NLT. So that says all scripture, right? It says, let me get that for the, those on. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. That is second um, Timothy 3 verse 16. So looking at the scripture there though, what can we see? What are we seeing in uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. When I look, and I want you to look at the scripture with me. So those on TikTok, get your Bible, look at the scripture with me and see if you're seeing what I'm seeing as well. So I see all scripture. Are we all seeing that? Yes. We're seeing all scripture. And the last time we check, all means everything. The whole of it. The entire Bible, right? So that includes the parts you like and the parts you don't like. The parts you read and the parts you skip over, right? The parts that make you, that will make you happy and the parts that annoys you, huh? All, 
the entire Bible, right? So the entire Bible is inspired and profitable. So that's not what I am trying to say. This is what the Bible says. Have you seen that? So look, look at the verse again and see if you are seeing that. Yes, somebody on, um, on Zoom says all means all. Perfect definition. All means all. Everything. Every word. Everything. So the entire Bible is inspired and profitable. And this expresses the extent of the inspiration. The what? Extent of the inspiration that we're here defining. So we have the word there. Profitable means beneficial and useful. So the next point that we can see from the scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16, is that the entire Bible is God-breathed. Are you seeing that in the verse? The entire Bible is what? God-breathed. This expresses the means of the inspiration. So the first part telling us that the, the end, all scripture inspired is expressing the intent, the extent rather of the inspiration. Now we're seeing the what? The, the what? The means of the inspiration. So when we consider the meaning of inspire in its English context, to which we are most accustomed, it carries the idea um, of inhaling, isn't it? When you think of um, inspire, it carries the idea of inhaling, that is to take in breath. However, in the context of the scripture, inspire here tells us that God breathe out something, right? And this something happens to be the scripture. The word. Are we seeing that? The word. Certainly, human wrote the text. But the Bible originated as an action of God who breathed it out. So we also see in this verse that the Bible is profitable. So what are the things we're seeing? We see that the Bible, is the entire Bible is inspired. We're seeing that it is God-breathed. And here we're seeing that it is profitable. The Bible, all of it is profitable. And this expresses the purpose of the, of the um, inspiration. So... It profits consist in teaching. Are we seeing that in the word? So look in the word. Look at it. See if you're seeing that. In reproof. In correcting. In restoring. And also in training in righteousness. In what? Training in righteousness. In order that we may be. What's the purpose? We're talking about this is the extent of the purpose. That we may be fitted, capable, proficient, and furnished completely in every area of our lives. Not some, but in every area of our lives. So, if we only respect some part, we're going to have a problem. If we only want to understand some part, we're going to have a problem. If we only want to read some parts, we're going to have problems. We have to embrace as believers the entire Bible. We have to be able and willing to refute any other arguments. And the arguments about the Bible, they are many. So the Bible is not to be put in a museum. Your Bible is not to be kept in your handbag. Your Bible is not supposed to be locked in a showcase. The Bible is to be used in our lives. The Bible is what? Is to be used. Opening up your Bible and putting it down won't help us. So many people open up the scriptures and put it in a back room. Claiming that they're running doppy. Look here. That won't help us. It don't make any sense you carry the Bible in your back, in your back pocket. It don't make any sense you just have it in your office put down. We have to do what? Use the Bible so that it can change our lives. We have to what? Use the Bible. So let's see if we can summarize a little bit. 
So we're in putting the three steps together from 2 Timothy 3.16. The verse teaches us that the entire Bible came from, who wants to tell me? The entire Bible came from God in order to do what? What's the purpose? So we see the extent. The entire Bible came from God. Somebody is typing here. Let me see. Yes, it came from God to show us how to live. To show us how to live. When we look around in our world today, so many persons are not sure how to live. We can safely say that too many of us do not know how to live. So we can understand what the problem is. We are not in the word. So if we're not in the word, if we're not utilizing the word, we won't know how to live. And we're going to live like something else. So we have now added some muscles to the bones that we had last week. Right? And what, we're, what we have added is to realize that, look here. Yes, I understand that the word of God is God's word. It's God breathed. I understand what inspiration is, understand the function of the Bible in my life. So as we embark upon Bible studies, it's not just pastime. It's not just um, something that we do. It's not, it's not time to, you know, like, like club, a little club. When we come together, when we decide we're going to chart out whatever time it is for Bible study, we're coming to learn of God, learn of what he says for us so that we can live. He has set this out for us so that we can live. I want to live. I want to live abundant life. I want to live an effective life. How about you? I want to live a life where I don't always have to be um, learning from mistakes, whether my mistakes or other people's mistakes. And we do that. We, we embrace that kind of living because we are not in the word that is showing us how to live. So I think, I think have we answered the, the, the question, what is inspiration? Can you explain it to somebody else? Is it down in your spirit where you are moved to trust the word? Because one of the things that we recognize that many Christians, many believers are doubtful about the word of God. We have heard so many people say so much nonsense or ridiculous things about the word of God that we are not so sure what we believe about the word of God. But the word of God is inspired. The word of God is true. The word of God is able to change us, to transform us, to reform us, and to make us into that exact thing that God has written in his book about us. Now, I want to hear from you. I've been talking for a while now. Would you be kind enough to share your illumination or questions? You can type it so that we can read it so others can um, benefit those here. You can speak so that I will repeat as well so others can hear and benefit. So now we have a little time for discussion and feedback based on where you're at. Any illumination, any feedback? What did you hear in any information? We all don't hear everything, but we hear one thing. One thing stands out. What do we hear? Nobody wants to share? Oh, shame. <laughs> All right, let me see anybody writing here. What do we hear? Okay, great. Thank you. Make the Bible part of our life. Yes. If we hear nothing else tonight, that is something worth sharing. We must make the Bible a part of our lives. You know how we check our accounts? How we check, you know, especially... 
here in Jamaica, how a certain bank having all kinds of crisis. Every minute you check to see if what you put in there is still there. We need to make the Bible a part of our lives. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Any illumination? Anything you'd like to share? Okay. All right. So if we're, we're at the end of our session, not going to stress you out at all. We came on to answer one question. What is inspiration? And I think I did. Nobody says no until you have not done so. So we have done that. So we are going to um, praise the Lord. We're going to pray and we're going to log off where you can go and utilize your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you tonight for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for granting us this time to be together, this time to share. Lord, I pray that as we made the decision tonight to make the Bible, make the word a part of our lives, Lord, we have made so many decisions in mm -hmm. your presence. And then we walk away and we forget and life happens and it just gets hard. But tonight, Lord God, we are praying for a special anointing, a special favor, Lord Jesus, that you'll cause us this time to make this decision and cause it to work. Cause us, oh God, to stick to it. Cause us to understand it's a commitment. It's not just something that we desire. Cause us to understand something that we must do if we're going to be effective, if we're going to please you. And pleasing you is what we are about. And so, Father, we thank you tonight for what you have done. We thank you, Lord God, for what we have learned. We thank you, Lord God, that you'll cause it to continue to churn and to churn over in our minds. And Lord, that we'll continue to research and to read and to, and to understand fully. So, Lord God, we can embrace and we can share and teach others. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Have a blessed, blessed um, week. See you again next week, Friday. Invite someone out. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you richly. Have a wonderful night. Wonderful weekend too. Hallelujah.